Hey guys, it's me, Stormy. So I'm getting ready to start this new playlist for us, this new set of learning videos, and these ones we're gonna talk transits. Now I wanna be clear that what I'm gonna talk about in these videos is what the transit is and what it's like for each of these planets in a very general way. It comes down to interpretation, it comes down to aspects being made to things in your chart or the chart that you're reading, but I want you to have a basic understanding of what the energies are like and what some of the lessons can be like when each of these planets is making a transit. So right away, what is a transit? Well, we know when we're looking at a natal chart, right, a birth chart, we see the planets in their snapshot that they were in at the time that you were born. And I like to joke, I say, you know what, the planet stood still for you once, and that's about what you're going to get from them. Because other than that, they move on, right? Like we know those planets are moving. That's how we feel different effects of their energy. But when a planet is moving, that's what we call a transiting planet. Now, as we look at this transiting planet, the way we interpret that, is we interpret that planet in its today's energy, right? That's not the place that it was necessarily when you were born and in your chart. It's definitely not the place that it's going to be forever, but it's what it's hanging out doing today, okay? And if it's making an aspect to something in your natal chart, then we get to read that um, interpretation a little bit deeper beyond just that planet hanging out doing its thing. But basically, transiting planets are are going to represent incoming influences or incoming events that are going to come up in your life. Now your natal planet is being asked to handle these events, right? Or to navigate these events. So depending on the nature of the transiting planet, that's gonna describe the type of events that are gonna arise, that are gonna come up. And depending on the nature of your natal planet that it's interacting with, is going to show us which piece of you personally at a soul level, at a personal human level, which pieces of you you are working on to grow at that time because transiting energy gives us an opportunity with every single transit to add to our knowledge base right it adds to our human experience takes us out of that zone of opinion of what you think something would be like but you actually have the experience some are a lot more positive some are a lot more negative you know sometimes we have a really good transit and it's like I learned so much about joy that I never knew then and we have other ones where it's like I learned to grieve the loss of a parent and I had never done that right each of the transits though, their point is to help shape us into getting these lessons that we need to get done and adding to that knowledge base to kind of, you know, rub off those sharp edges of our personality and really let our authentic selves shine through. So if you would like to know what it's like in a general way when each of our planets make a transit, then go ahead and just stay and watch the rest of this video. You can click down below, find the time for the planet that you'd like to learn about, or just watch the whole darn shebang. I'm totally good with either. All right, guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. All right, so when we're looking at what in a very general way a sun transit is like with that big old pretty picture there. When we see the tr sun's transit happening, these point to places where you kind of get that pat on the back, right? You're going to want special attention. You're going to want people to know your name. Sometimes this can be um, timing that's in public or in some kind of public setting, just where your name is really getting out there. You're having a lot of appreciation shown to you. It's like, just like the sun. This is the time when you want to shine, right? And I think about this because usually when we're looking at some kind of sun transit, it's usually around our birthdays, right? And of course it happens other times, but when I think about the sun transit at my birthday time, I'm like, yes, well, <laughs> hello. You know what I mean? Like, I feel very good about it. I feel like it's my special day. And the funny thing about um, looking at the sun transit is whether you are a yes, it's my birthday, feel free to celebrate me person, or you're a hider. Either way, this pulls into a space where you're sucking in a lot of attention to yourself. And it's a really interesting kind of energy, I think, to see um, work out. But when we look at the way it could be affecting other things in your life, this is definitely the time where you may be receiving a heck of a lot of applause for something that you've got going on. So this is a really fun transit. Whenever we're looking at um, a moon transit and it's touching something 
in our chart or it's just feeding us energy with this transit one of the things is that we become very emotional we start to see things from an emotional um, perspective and now how emotional you're going to be that will very much so depend on the transit and what it's touching in your chart but for all of us instincts get really heightened here and we're able to just kind of sense things without knowing them it's not the same as a neptune transit but it is definitely a space where those emotions are just up and raw and available you can feel your moodiness happen and it lasts like a couple days you know a day or two until it moves on but in this place in this placement one thing that i think is really phenomenal to remember about the benefit of the moon transit is that not only does it peak and perk up those emotions but it really does give you this kind of tap into wait a minute why am i sensing vibes in some way of things that i maybe don't even know and i can't even see but I think they're really, really true. So this is a transit that can definitely be useful too as well to get you back in touch with something emotionally that may have been bothering you maybe even for weeks and you hadn't been quite able to address it because you couldn't quite put your finger on what it was. These kinds of transits are really, really helpful for bringing that stuff to the surface. When we're interacting with a Mercury transit, things speed up. It speeds up wherever it's at. We are usually put in a position where it's heavy communication, uh, extra emails, extra phone calls, extra conversation, and it's usually all just very sped up. Now, the other thing it does is we have to remember that it has a very dual nature. So we can usually be in a position where we're having to do two things at once, or we have to make a decision between two things, because this is a heavy thinking and of the mind communication, decision-making kind of planet. So when we see this, it's kind of fun. The way I like to think about it whenever we're having some kind of fantastic Mercury transit is I love the messenger God Hermes. I'm such a fan of all of that. And I just always think he's having a little fun. He's like, how about some of this over here? So how about some of this over here? But what you'll notice is that likely your life communication wise, depending on the interaction gets very, very busy. And you're just like, can I have extra hands, please? <laughs> During a Venus transit, this is the time where it's like the universe says, hey, here's a little bit of a break. And P.S. I also have a gift for you as well. Venus loves to receive gifts. It's a very social kind of transit. It's you're mingling, you're at parties, you love good food, you love good drink. It's very cushy. You know what I mean? But Venus is also over money. So this could be a transit where you are seeing money come to you in some form and fashion. This is really not a time of, um, have the outgoing money except for in terms of the fact that you may be inclined to spend a lot of money um, on something that you really think is very indulgent or very delectable to you but what i think is most heavily indicated at this time is that you are going to do more than your usual amount of being social getting to know new people and really kind of being in a pampery space to yourself and to others and of course romance <laughs> when we're in a mars transit or mars is transiting really useful energy this is the time that if you have a project that is going to take a lot of hard work it's going to take a lot of energy to get it done this is a phenomenal time to initiate those projects during this kind of transit because you usually have so much energy coming into you that you have to channel it somewhere or it can very much so look like being very angry, being very violent, being accident prone. Oh my goodness, I don't know how many accidents I've seen during certain Mars transits and depending on what it's interacting with. But the Mars transit is really about giving you life. I mean, it brings so much energy to the table for you to have at your availability to work with. You just channel code it incorrectly so that you can take it more to the positive instead of having it be such a cranky crabby kind of transit during a jupiter transit you find yourself with opportunities presented to you and it is to your best interest to take them because they're helping you grow jupiter transit makes you curious about the houses that it's visiting and to the interactions it's with it wants to know the deeper problems but not deep but the bigger like what's the big picture of this you know what I mean what are the real concerns of this house what's my philosophy around this house or this interaction you could also find yourself in a Jupiter transit being like I want to travel I want to take a class oh I really want to learn something new or I want to teach something new the other thing that is really fortunate during um, a Jupiter transit is you are bolder 
you are typically wiser and you can take a little bit more risk with a little bit more confidence just depending on what it's interacting with. Now, the other thing that can happen during a Jupiter transit is that you can really grow. And sometimes that's physically, especially if it's interacting with Venus. My goodness, you can be so crazy indulgent. But this is really a very useful transit and a very positive one typically as well. Now, during a Saturn transit, people don't typically jump up and down like, yay, this thing is happening, it's Saturn. But I really try and teach that Saturn, wherever and whatever it's doing, it's it's really coming as a helper. It helps us spiritually mature as well. Saturn comes with that big old stick and knocks on your structure of whatever it's interacting with to see if it's steady and sturdy enough to hold and for you to survive and for those things to be able to hold up in the storms of life that will in fact come for you. Now, what happens is if they're steady, they're sturdy, it's like Saturn lives with you with some kind of little like treat, like woohoo, you, you passed this test good job. Now sometimes literally when you are in a Saturn transit you can find yourself completing something. You get the real reward, the diploma, the certificate, the baby, whatever this looks like, right? It can be very much so about yay you passed the test and here's your cool thing. Now, when we don't pass the test, we start to feel like life is hard during this transit. We start to feel like this area is very complicated. And it's because Saturn has shown us that that structure will not hold. So Saturn comes as a helper and the taskmaster. He says, no, we're going to see it for what it is, and we have to firm this structure. But what I love about Saturn, and he gets such a bad rap, but he says, we are going to firm this structure. Saturn doesn't leave you to do it on your own, but he definitely points out what's not working. This also includes um, discipline issues that you have maybe in certain areas of your life, whether it be with eating or drinking or exercising or things like that. He really just kind of hands it to you on a hot plate and says, here's what's not working. Now, it is traditionally during a Saturn transit, depending um, it's not traditionally a great time to start any new things because you're really very busy working on whatever he's got presented to you at the time for you to work on right then. So when we find ourselves inside of a Uranus transit or we're watching Uranus transit, the thing is about it is that anything that you think is going to go a certain way typically doesn't. You know what I mean? Everything is standard except for not standard. <laughs> this Uranus transit usually comes to break you out of a shell, break you out of rut. I mean, its characteristics are spontaneity, um, reversal, surprise, plan changes, quick plan changes, things like that. Now, what I like and I think is most effective about when we see Uranus coming to touch some portion of our life is because they come to do it different, right? Uranus says, that's not working. You're stuck in a rut. I'm here. I'm going to break you out. And so this is the time of what I like to call visitors, right? These are temporary people who come into our space or come into our life. They have some critical means of information we need to either break out of our own lives or they themselves come present something that cracks us out of our shell, right? Or some opportunity, some conversation. Um, sometimes it's accidents and it cracks us out of where we've been stuck standing still and why that can sometimes feel like a mess when they leave. It's like my life is in shambles. Uh, it also got you out of where you were at and prepared to move forward in a different way. Now, the other thing it can also look like is, oh my gosh, I can't believe, like, I've never even seen that person again. I'm, I'm never going to see them again. I have no idea where they even came from. These are the times, too, where I feel like we have these little angel drops where it's like, how is it possible that I didn't step off of that curb, right? I feel like this is that kind of angelic angel. I really like, or energy. I really like this transit because it just comes and presents such an air of magic spontaneity and mystery but the thing to remember about all of it is whatever's happening is it is temporary it usually is not staying but it's still good to get you started on a new course of action or thinking or being so during the neptune transit it's a time when the universe asks you to just to dream to be inspired to be visionary to have compassion. Compassion in whatever area it's touching is always lifted. It's deepened. There are psychic moments completely available to all of us, even those who believe that they don't really have those abilities. It comes in and it's very, it's blissful, it's blurry, 
it's um, visionary, it's meditative. But what it can also do is you can find yourself during this Neptune transit in whatever area, you can find yourself just like taking deep breaths. You're just like, or you're sighing, or you're just, you're, you're nostalgic, and you don't really see things in front of you as clearly as they necessarily are. You maybe even can't see them from what they for what they are. And it's really a blessing of this transit, I think. Because then when you come to the other side of whatever this transit is doing, when it's over, it's almost like everything about you is so incredibly different. And you don't remember doing anything. You don't remember changing it. But the perspectives that you have and just the the love and the forgiveness you can have around certain situations can be completely different. And I like to tell people, it's like your rough edges got um, rubbed off. You were standing right there the whole time, but you just thought they were giving you a nice massage, but really it was helping shape you and your destiny and your vision to go forward. So a really fun transit, of course, depends on what it's interacting with, but in general, pretty good. During a Pluto transit, you know, the ideas here are death, rebirth, regeneration. This is your phoenix rising from the ashes kind of energy. Um, even things about obsession can kind of fall in here as well. But when Pluto's transiting, it's like whatever's not working or whatever has overstayed its welcome in your life or just you've, you've gone too far with it, right? These things start to fall away and it's really because wherever Pluto goes, he says, hey, the old this needs to die off so that the new this can live. So one of the great promises on the other side of the Pluto transit is that you come out empowered in some way. It is not typically a fun and gentle kind of transit, much like Saturn, but it's going to bring deep inner transformation. And on the other side, you're like, holy bananas. Why was I keeping that in my life? Why was I holding on to that? And oh my gosh, now I'm set in a position where I have to see the situations. I have to see myself. I have to see all of these things for exactly what they are and standing in the truth, I'm empowered because then I have honest spiritual movement to move forward with. So it's very much so, I don't always think that um, Pluto presents an easy transit by any means, but it is one that I think is the most effective because sometimes we just need to face our own tacos and understand that it's not about fear, it's about empowerment. So hopefully you guys liked this video. The information is useful to you, gave you a very general understanding of what it's like as we're using um, transiting energy and what that means. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, look for more videos on the Stormy Grace channel. Feel free to browse through my videos and don't forget to subscribe, of course, but join me on Facebook. We've got a lot of good stuff that happens on Facebook and I don't want you to miss out on any of it. This video Bye guys. Is focusing on how to get what you really want, what you truly want and desire. One thing that keeps coming up in the email.